Hey kids, how are you doing today? I hope you are having an awesome, awesome day. It is so good to be here with you for Online Children's Church here at Faith. And looking forward to the day when we're able to actually get together and be able to have Children's Church again all together in person. But this is still a pretty cool way to be able to do this. So I hope you've been enjoying as we've been going through the unsung heroes of the Bible. And we're going to continue to do that. Well, who have we looked at so far? We've, we've uh, talked about Mordecai. We've talked about Balaam's donkey. Right? So we've talked about a couple of people that don't get talked about too much. And we're going to do the same today. We're going to talk about a guy named Simon. Now, this isn't Simon from Simon Said. Stand up, sit down. He didn't just walk around telling people what to do. This also isn't Simon the disciple, Simon Peter. This is a person who we refer to, we call him Simon of Cyrene. And that's because he comes from a place called Cyrene. So it's Simon from Cyrene. So I have a little map here. You can see this here. I'm going to get nice and close to my camera. So right here at the bottom in North Africa, that is Cyrene. And so Simon had come from Cyrene all the way to Jerusalem a pretty long long trip remember they didn't have cars or airplanes back there at this time so they either walked or maybe they took a boat we don't know but he was there and you know what he was there with his two boys and we don't know how many kids he had but we know that he had at least two because we're told in the gospel of mark that he was there with his two boys you know what their names were their names were alexander and rufus Alexander and Rufus. Do you know anyone named Alexander or Rufus? You probably know an Alex, but Rufus, we don't, we don't use that name quite as often anymore, but these were somewhat uh, common names back in Jesus' day. And so he had his two boys. They were probably, we don't know how old they were, but they were probably younger, maybe around like 10 to 12 years old, maybe around 12, because they had to make that long journey, and that probably means that they were a little bit older. But they were in Jerusalem. They had gone all the way from Cyrene to Jerusalem for the Passover. Because you know what time, what day it was? It was on a very special day. It was on a very special Friday that you've heard of. You want to guess? Yeah, this was on Good Friday. Now, what happened on Good Friday? Do you remember? Do you remember what happened? On Good Friday, that's the day that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. It's right before Easter. And so on that was the day Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And that was the day that Simon was coming into Jerusalem. Now what happened? Well, Jesus, if you remember the story uh, of his crucifixion, right? He, on Thursday night, he was praying in a garden. And some guards came and they arrested him. And then they put him on trial right then. They took him and they put him on trial and he was on trial all night. And even though he hadn't done anything wrong, they still said, we're going to punish you and we want to kill you. And so they arranged to have him killed. In fact, you might remember the time when the crowds were saying, crucify him, crucify him. Now, they also did a lot of other really mean things to Jesus. Jesus was hit a lot of times. He was, he was whipped. Someone took a, a line and, and hit him and actually had little rocks and barbs on it so it really hurt they put you remember the crown of thorns on him so by the time all of that was done jesus was tired he was in a lot of pain he was hurting a lot and so they said we're going to send you out and we're going to crucify you. we're going to hang you on a cross and you know what they did they then said but you have to carry your own cross all the way to where we're going to do this and this was not easy this was a very big, heavy wooden cross, and he couldn't do it. He was so tired and so so sore and in so much pain, he couldn't do it, and he kept falling down. And that's when Simon comes into the story. Simon, it says, he was a certain man from Cyrene. Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country. And they forced him, the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Can you imagine how scary that was? Scary for Simon, who's being grabbed by the, 
the soldiers and forced to do this, but also scary for Alexander and Rufus, seeing their dad taken this way and being forced to do this. And it was not easy. It was very a very heavy cross. And he had to carry that all the way to the place where they hung Jesus on the cross. But what he did was an ama amazing blessing for Jesus. He helped to ease Jesus' burden that day. When Jesus couldn't carry that cross, he carried it for him. And so today, when we talk about Simon, we often talk about carrying a cross. Now, Jesus also talked about carrying a cross. And when he talked about carrying a cross, he talked about it in a way of following him. So he didn't mean hey, you have to go find a big piece of wood and make it in the shape of a cross and walk around with it. That's not what he meant. What he meant was that there are going to be things that we do when we follow Jesus that might be hard. We might do something that somebody teases us about. Or maybe, you know, they make fun of us. Maybe it's, it's something where we have to, to give up something that we'd rather have. Maybe, maybe we're working a job and we're mowing lawns or something like that. And instead of I'm going to keep everything for me. Maybe we give some of it to help someone else in need. And we give up some things. We may do what we call making a sacrifice. We do something where we're giving up something or, or doing something very difficult for Jesus. And so sometimes we call that carrying your cross. Just like how Simon carried a real cross, we carry a cross in a figurative way. We, we do it by doing something difficult. So what are some ways that you might carry your cross for Jesus? I want you guys to have that conversation in your families right now. So go ahead and pause the video. And when you're done with the conversation, start it back up. I'll be here. All right. How did that conversation go? Did you come up with some ways, some things that you might do that kind of sacrifice for Jesus or maybe some things that might be a little hard to help others or to, to, to follow Jesus? Good. Good. So when we talk about carrying our cross, there's also another thing that we can talk about with that, which is that when, when Simon, he carried the cross, he did this in a way that helped Jesus to be able to die for our sins. And when we carry our cross, we can do it in a way that shows people that Jesus died for our sins to save us. So we don't just carry the cross to have hard times, but rather so people can, get, can know Jesus. And so when we talk about carrying the cross, we can also mean it in that way. We do things so that people can see how much Jesus loves them so that they can hear about what Jesus did on that cross. And it can be a way to share Jesus with other people. So let's have another conversation at home. Talk about what are some ways, maybe, that you might carry your cross in this way, a way to be able to share Jesus and what he did on the cross with people that you know, maybe teachers or friends or family members. Go ahead and have that conversation and pause it, and I'll be here when you're done. All right. Did you come up with some good ways to be able to share Jesus with other people? I hope so. Because that's one of the greatest things that we can do. Because when we tell people how Jesus died on the cross for their sins, they too can believe and be saved. They can have all their sins forgiven and be a child of God. So let's, we're going to close in prayer here in just a moment. But let's think about and remember these conversations that we had and think about how can we carry our cross for Jesus. Because Jesus, of course, he died on the cross for us. And he did that before we did anything for him. That's how much he loves us. So how can we show that love to other people? Let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for saving me. Help me to be willing to do hard things for you to give up things for you and help me to tell others what you did on the cross. Amen. 
All right. Well, have an awesome week. We have another uh, activity for you uh, that should be on the page down below here where you actually will make a cross that you can wear as a necklace. And uh, I hope you enjoy that. And it helps remind you what Jesus has done for you, but also how you can tell others about him and serve others. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you next time. God bless!